So there's something that is much more important than anything in your life situation. And that's the ability to be still. That's one way of putting it. <clears throat> and in that you realize that the depth, there is a depth to who you are, a presence, that shows to you, without any doubt, that whatever happens in your life situation out there is of secondary importance. And when things are not satisfying in your life situation, whether it's to do with money, work, relationships, living situation, health, It is often precisely at those moments when things don't work in one or several of these areas that there is an opportunity for you to go deeper within yourself and find that realm of stillness or spaciousness or presence, whatever you want to call it. So you become, to some extent, free from external conditions. The conditions of your life, including the physical body, even that's still external, no longer have the ability to make you really unhappy. Really upset and frustrated and fearful and anxious. On the other side, this may sound like bad news, but it's not. All these external things also lose their ability to make you really happy. Wow, yeah, I got it now. Yeah. You can still feel enthusiastic and enjoy life tremendously, whatever life gives you in the world of form. But there's always something, there's something transcendent in you from where you observe and enjoy the beautiful things that come into your life. There's an enjoyment there. But you don't give them an importance that they don't have. You don't attach yourself to them. You allow them to be. It may be a possession that comes to you, and, you, and it's lovely. You look after it, whatever it is, a house, an object. You appreciate it. It's lovely. You look after it. without that strong sense of attachment, of mine. <clears throat> I 
And when things come into your life that are not pleasant, perhaps physically not pleasant, you get stranded out in the cold or whatever it is, again, we can't say that you particularly like that, that you enjoy that, but You're in touch with the transcendent dimension, so your aversion to whatever arises does not consume you, it just is there on the surface. You know you perhaps some action, you need to take some action to get out of the situation and then you do it. So if you just take a very simple example, the weather. Of course you enjoy a beautiful sunny day. And then the next day is grey and rainy as it is here today. And yet there is a transcendent dimension in you where that makes absolutely no difference. So when it's rainy you say, oh it's rainy. And perhaps the mindset would have been nice if it had been sunny today. We could have gone out for a long walk, gone to the beach, walk in the forest. They had a picnic, whatever. And yet, at a deeper level, does it really matter? whether you have a picnic or not today or go to the beach or stay in the source of real enjoyment is never really in out there what happens out there it's it arises out of the stillness within you Conditions do not need to be any particular in a way for you to be connected with the stillness, to be the stillness. Did you hear that? That was a news flash on an iPad. <laughs> ah, what's happening? To look. So we are speaking of and hopefully realize experientially what we could call the transcendent dimension to who you are where there may still be on the surface of your life some happiness and unhappiness if you even want to call it that and yet those things no longer touch the deeper dimension of who you are there's a transcendent dimension that's not, it's, you can't really call it. I know some spiritual teachers talk of happiness, but like Ramana Maharshi, but what he really means is, is a transcendent state. So I don't use those words because the way I use happiness and unhappiness, they refer to surface reality. and surface experiences, the experience of being unhappy or happy. There is a transcendent state of presence, of inner peace, 
that is beyond happiness or unhappiness. And, but it's very alive. You don't become dead inside. In the absence of this ability to become still, to be connected with the stillness, to be the stillness, if you don't have that, then it's better to experience happiness and unhappiness rather than deaden yourself completely and say, I don't want to feel anything anymore. But who wants to be trapped in that continuous <clears throat> ups and downs of your life? All those. And the downs for many people are more frequent than the ups. <laughs> and react to everything that Every little thing that doesn't go as it's supposed to go, this, this reactive me. It's a dreadful way to live. So, stillness, your best friend, always there for you. Don't get attached to those words, of course, it's much deeper than your friend, because stillness essentially is one with who you are. But as we approach it, I might occasionally use words just as temporary pointers. And as you begin to have glimpses of stillness, for a little while, it may be helpful to regard it as your best friend. And then you let go of that. And please don't believe that stillness needs to be outside of you in, so that you can become still inside. In the midst of noise, you can be still. External noise. And as you probably know, the quickest way to become still in the midst of things, noisy things surrounding you, is to accept the present moment completely as it is, just this moment. It already is. People are screaming around you, whatever they do, this is what is. Traffic building up, whatever, whatever the situation at this moment already is as it is. So by completely accepting that this is what is right now, which doesn't prevent you from taking action, if action needs to be taken, but what is, is. And by completely accepting what is, even if it's noisy or whatever, opens you up to the stillness. So when you, if you, if you do meditate and you sit down and you close your eyes and maybe you have a technique or you don't have a technique anymore and you just sit 
and be still and if then a disturbing noise happens somewhere around you sometimes you say oh I can't meditate with noise like that of course that's a thought that arises you don't need to believe that thought don't believe every thought that comes into your head I can't meditate now what's the change? it's precisely at that moment if you can completely accept whatever arises at this moment it sometimes can be a great opportunity to to go deep enough where the stillness is when something outside does not seem to be conducive to stillness and yet you completely accept this present moment and oh there it is despite the noise there it is so spiritual awakening more often comes in spite of something seemingly that did not look conducive to spiritual awakening it more often comes that way than because of something because of would be a beautiful experience and you would think, oh, and these, I have nothing to worry about, I have security, lovely surroundings. Now I have time for spiritual awakening. Do you? Maybe. Could be. But more likely not. So here you are, let's say, one day you are in a beautiful spa, in a warm climate, it's sunny, you're getting massage with lovely oils, exquisite food, gentle music or sound of water in the background everything is absolutely perfect a few weeks later you get home somebody falsely accuses you of something you get put in prison and there you are extremely unpleasant noisy surroundings bad food bad company which situation is more likely to bring about spiritual awakening? <clears throat> which means takes you to a deeper level within yourself, to the stillness. I'm not going to answer that. I'll leave you with those two situations. Be still. Be at peace. Be at one with the present moment. <clears throat>